In this video, I'm going to prove to you that cheaters in Valorant are way more common than you think. And with hard evidence, I'll also be exposing all the methods they use to bypass the Chinese spyware called Vanguard. If you ask Valorant players about the cheating situation in the game today, the common consensus is that it's not too bad, with cheaters being as rare as unicorns. However, there are some who disagree, saying that cheaters might not be as uncommon as we might think, and I am one of them. You see, I've been playing Valorant since its beta. Some players just rub me the wrong way. Usually, if a player has good aim, I would chalk it up to them being a smurf, except they would take incredibly dumb decisions that experienced players usually wouldn't. It was especially evident when I would spectate my own cracked teammate and watch them fumble the basics of things. So, I got researching. During this whole ordeal, I found this video by Unity Research where he showcases how cheaters actually bypass kernel-level anti-cheats. But I wanted to go deeper, to see it for myself. And my god, there's a whole network of cheaters and booster. Forms filled with data offsets, telegrams, sites that have not been indexed by Google yet, and most secretive Discord servers. It's filled with cheating methods that even the most invasive spyware in the world cannot detect, even when Riot's dev team will tell otherwise. So let's dive in, going way back to the inception of competitive games and the rise of cheating. Cheating has always been a thing. Even if we go back to the prehistoric era of the Counter-Strike source, players often used glitches and exploits to gain an unfair advantage, and occasionally actual cheats like aimbots and wall hacks. While this was frustrating, it was somewhat less problematic because these games were community-moderated. Players could report cheaters to human moderators who oversaw each game lobby, allowing for swift action against rule breakers. But then, StarCraft. Brood War came out in 1998, and things started to change. This game brought in the whole idea of randomly matchmaking players against each each other, which was a new thing. Before, you'd pick your own game lobbies, but now the game did it for you. This random matchmaking thing caught on, and other multiplayer games followed suit. The shift was a big deal for handling cheating. In the old days, with community-run servers, players had more control and could quickly deal with cheaters. But with random matchmaking, games relied on automatic anti-cheat programs, which, to be honest, weren't always great and worked only half the time. So. Cheating became a bigger and trickier issue in online games. Then along came Valorant, the knight in shining armor, promising to rescue the gaming world from the clutches of cheaters. You could almost hear the dramatic music in the background. But let's get real for a second. When Valorant came out, promising to fix cheating in online games, it felt like someone promising to turn Monday mornings into the highlight of the week. It's a nice thought, but I had my doubts. Still, there was something about Valorant's swagger, its sheer confidence, that made me want to give it a shot. Part of me was curious, and another part was just waiting to see if they'd trip over their own superhero cape. In a way, Valorant really did make strides. When the beta came out, the first big ban wave hit a bunch of hackers hard. Even now, people trust the system. You'll hear gamers bragging about encountering maybe two cheaters in their whole Valorant life. But here's the thing, I'm here to tell you that there are actually more cheaters in the game than you might think. On paper, Vanguard is the perfect anti-cheat system. It should be bulletproof, and it's supposed to be this impenetrable shield against cheating. But in reality, it's a bit more complicated. So I decided to go on this digital detective journey to figure out how these cheaters are getting away with it. I knew right off the bat that the basic cheats you find with a quick Google search weren't going to be enough. We'll probably just find scams that way, but... The really effective stuff that's kept under lock and key. To get your hands on that, you need to know the right people, have the right connections. I didn't have those connections, but what I did have is an idea. So my plan was to infiltrate the secretive world of cheaters, kind of like how Unity Research did. The strategy was simple. Jump into deathmatch games in Valorant and use my instincts to spot a cheater. How do I exactly know someone is cheating? Well, remember the cheaters being stupid part. Yeah, that. After some time, you develop a sixth sense for these stuff. You just get this gut feeling when someone's not playing fair. Once I identified a suspected cheater, the next step was to add them as a friend and pretend to be a fellow cheater. Cheaters often have this sense of camaraderie, so if you approach them saying you're one of them, they're likely to open up and maybe even give you access to their exclusive hacking circles. But here's where I hit a snag. To convincingly say I was cheating, I needed to beat them in a gunfight and ideally win the deathmatch, sort of proof of my cheating skills. Problem? I wasn't winning. Like, at all. It turns out that being good enough to beat suspected cheaters in a game riddled with them is a whole different ball game. So plan B. I needed to dive into lower ranked lobbies so I could actually win some games. Believe it or not, even among the lower ranks, you'll find cheaters. Their lack of skill ironically makes them more noticeable, especially since they're not the sharpest tools in the shed. 
and tend to get stuck in these lower rated games. To get into these easier lobbies, I needed an account with a low matchmaking rank. Enter my friend Ryan, who is in possession of an iron account. Thanks to Ryan's less than stellar gaming skills, I had my gateway into the Iron League. Again, thanks to Ryan for being the bottom 1.3% of all Valorant players. With Ryan's account in hand, I started my undercover mission. It was a grind. I reached out to over 100 players. Lost count after a while, but only got responses from about nine. And out of those, just two were willing to chat enough for me to sweet talk them into revealing the servers where they got their cheats from. It was like looking for a needle in a haystack, but finally, I was getting somewhere. From my deep dive into the world of Valorant cheaters, I uncovered some interesting methods they used to bypass Vanguard. One of the ways, which honestly surprised me with its simplicity, involves using Auto Hotkey. It is a scripting language mainly used for automating the Windows GUI and general scripting. Cheaters use Auto Hotkey to create color aimbots. These scripts track the specific color of enemy players on the screen, guiding the aim towards them. It's a rudimentary form of cheating, but it can be effective to a degree. The reason Auto Hotkey isn't outright blocked or doesn't trigger an immediate ban might be due to its legitimate uses. It is also used for various non-nefarious tasks, which makes it a bit of a gray area for anti-cheat systems. There's a split in the cheating community about this method. Some cheaters are all in on this type of hack, while others argue that these external aimbots just don't cut it. They point out that it's not accurate or precise enough, suggesting that you might actually be better off not using it at all. It's a bit of a hack job solution. Diving deeper into the world of sophisticated cheating, we encounter methods that are pretty high-tech and seriously challenging for anti-cheats like Vanguard to detect. The core of one such method is the exploitation of the extensible firmware interface mappings. At the heart of this advanced cheating technique is the elusive EFI mapper. This tool is designed to map custom-made Windows drivers in such a way that they become invisible to both the anti-cheat systems and even Windows itself. These drivers cleverly disguise themselves as legitimate Windows drivers. By initiating the EFI mapper before Windows boots, cheat drivers can effectively hide themselves within the system. This covert operation allows cheaters to read the game's memory and run cheats that hook into system calls. Detecting these cheats is a slow process. Root-level anti-cheats have to identify patterns among reported cheaters who use the same cheat and then find the signature of the application performing the cheat. But how do you detect it if someone coded an EFI cheat themselves and used it for themselves? How do you catch this invisible digital Houdini? That's the million dollar question. If someone's crafty enough to make their own EFI cheat and use it solo, detecting it is like trying to find a needle in a haystack, except you're blindfolded and the needle might not even be a needle. Could be a piece of hay pretending to be a needle. Now, in an ideal world, anti-cheats like Vanguard would have some super secret tech wizardry to sniff these out. But let's face it, if it's a one-off cheat used by one person, detecting it becomes a game of luck, but even this level of security is not enough for some. They have to go an extra mile. They will dig deep, deeper than any software could ever hope to reach, deeper than the very first process the computer does upon starting. And that layer is the physical hardware of the PC itself. So, here's the deal. These cheaters are using something called a DMA controller. They plug this thing into their computer's PCI slot. This little gadget is like a ninja. It sneaks into the computer's memory without alerting the CPU or the operating system. Then this RAM data is sent to a secondary PC. This secondary computer processes the information, revealing crucial in-game details like player locations and health which the cheater can then view on a separate monitor. This method offers cheaters a significant edge, such as a mini-map which shows every enemy location or even wall hacks without fear of detection. Some cheaters are taking things to the next level. They're not just gathering player info on a second computer, they're actually overlaying this info right onto their main monitor. It's a sneaky move, since the main PC doesn't know that the game display and the cheat data are being combined. This makes these hacks super hard to detect. When it comes to hardware cheats like this, Arduino aimbots are the most popular. These work by the computer sending a video capture of Valorant to the Arduino. The Arduino then corrects mouse movement to shoot the enemy, with the Arduino spoofed to appear as a mouse for that specific reason. The way Vanguard can detect these is by noticing there are two mice plugged in. However, cheaters solve that by doing some tech wizardry, so the PC only reads one mouse input. But let's step back a moment. Imagine if Riot Games developed some advanced technology that could detect even the most sophisticated cheats within a week. While this sounds great, it wouldn't completely solve the cheating problem in Valorant. The main reason is that there's real money to be made through cheating, especially with services like Boosting, where players pay to have their accounts ranked up quickly. Since Valorant is a free game, even if cheaters get caught, they can easily create new accounts and continue cheating. You might think that banning the hardware ID of cheaters' computers would stop them, but it turns out that the system Vanguard uses for hardware ID bans isn't very effective anymore. Cheaters have cracked the code on faking hardware IDs, 
making those bands about as scary as a kitten. To test this, I decided to put my own computer at risk. I got a cheat program known to be detected from a friend on a Discord server and used it. I was worried I wouldn't get caught quickly because I played 15 rounds without any issue, until it finally happened. Next, I used a simple program to change my computer's hardware ID. It's like giving your computer a disguise. After doing that and a few other little tricks, I could play on my main account with no issue. This was all done for free and didn't take much effort. It makes you think, if it's that easy to get around the bans, are they really working? It's actually kind of funny when you think about it. Riot Games could pretty much solve this whole cheating problem just by requiring players to use their phone number to play ranked matches. This simple step could really shake things up. But here's the catch. They probably won't do it. Why? It all comes down to money. Making players use their phone numbers would mess up the whole smurfing scene. Fewer accounts mean less money being spent in the game. And that's something Riot probably doesn't want. Riot's confidence in their system and the lack of obvious cheaters in Valorant might make players feel pretty secure, but in reality, there's still a good number of cheaters in the game. You could argue that Valorant is different from Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike is swarming with hackers. You can't play five games without some rage hacker fucking spinbotting. But Valorant is a different story. Those extreme hacker situations are pretty rare in this game. And this is because of Vanguard. One of the reasons is that Vanguard is very strict about which programs it allows to interact with the game's executable. As a result, all of the hackers are either DMA or EFI based, which means they are external. That's a good thing because these external hacks are way less destructive compared to the obvious wild stuff you see in Counter-Strike. By preventing blatant and destructive hacks like spin bots, aim bots, and invulnerability cheats, Vanguard helps preserve the integrity of the game. It makes the matches in Valorant feel more fair. The key word being feel. The perception of fairness is crucial. When players can see that they're not constantly facing rage hackers with blatant cheats, they feel like they have a fighting chance. It creates a sense of balance, and that's vital for an enjoyable gaming experience. Moreover, considering how hassle the spoofing process is, hackers don't treat accounts as expendable as Counter-Strike hackers do. In this sense, perhaps Vanguard is doing its job. Maybe it doesn't have to catch every single hacker out there. It could just focus on nabbing enough of them to make sure the average player's game doesn't get wrecked. However, with that being said, let's talk Vanguard. The entire anti-cheat is a backdoor to your PC. It has access to every data your computer from the moment it boots up, from your mouse clicks to the fucking microphone. Yes, you heard me right. Valorant Terms of Service actually allows them to record your entire microphone if you're suspected to say unsavory things in-game. Furthermore, Riot is owned by Tencent. Tencent is a near-trillion-dollar Chinese technology and entertainment company that has been expanding into gaming. In particular, gaming has been a significant focus of theirs for a number of years. This has both political and security implications. In any case, giving software full access to your PC is never a good idea, especially a software owned by a regime obsessed with collecting data. Some folks argue that Vanguard's kernel access is no big deal because lots of other apps also dig deep into your system. But hey, just because other programs do it doesn't make it any less sketchy for Vanguard to get that kind of access. And saying we shouldn't worry about Vanguard having it just because others do is a weak excuse. Also, having Ring Zero access isn't automatically a disaster for a couple of reasons. One, sure, you can mess up your computer without needing that deep access. And two, no legit company just casually decides to tap into the kernel for fun, especially not for some something like a video game anti-cheat. It's rare for a good reason. It's kind of like saying since you have a house key, it's cool to give out copies because everyone who's used one before was trustworthy. That logic hasn't caused problems yet. But imagine installing software on millions of PCs and giving it total control. That software becomes a huge target. No software is completely hack-proof. And now this game becomes a golden key to millions, maybe even tens of millions of computers. Plus, Riot doesn't share info on security checks, so we might not even know if there's a huge security flaw until it's too late and someone takes advantage. Think it's unlikely. Remember the security issues with Steam, PlayStation, or the big scare with Team Fortress 2. These things happen, might not be today, might never happen, or it could be happening right now, and we'd be none the wiser for years. Heck, it's already been done, actually. Genshin Impact also uses its own kernel-level anti-cheat. And just last year, that access was used by a third party to gain access to thousands of users' PCs. They reverse-engineered a vulnerability in the kernel driver, and using that elevated permission, deployed a ransomware payload that simultaneously locked thousands of users' PCs until a certain amount of money was wired. If it can happen with Genshin Impact, it can happen with Valorant as well. No code is without its exploits. For now, I would suggest you don't install Valorant on a PC where you store sensitive data. And if you really want to play, play it on a separate laptop with a mouse and keyboard plugged in. Anyway, that's all for this video. Give a thumbs up if you liked the video. And if you really enjoyed it, maybe leave a subscribe. Goodbye for now.